Bless it, bless it, bless it, bless it be the name. Bless it be the name of my God. I love him, I love him. I love him, I love him, I love him, I love him. I love him, I love him. I want you to know that ain't no name above. Hey, lift him up. Bless it, bless it, bless it, bless it be the name. Bless it, bless it, bless it, bless it be the name. Bless it, bless it, bless it, bless it be the name. Bless it be the name of my God. I love him, I love him. I love him, I love him, I love him, I love him. I love him, I love him. I want you to know that ain't no name above him. I love him, I love him. I love him, I love him, I love him, I love him. Bless it, I love him, I love him. Chapter 10, if you have it, can you go there? Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. <clears throat> I can't let that go. He's still God and he's still good. Whew, he's still God and he's still good. Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 10. I don't know how. This is a equal opportunity ministry. Uh, I know it's women's night, but we got men and women in the room. That's right. So we're just going to preach to everybody. I see some more you students in here. How you doing? I absolutely love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. When you have Acts chapter 10, say, I'm there. I'm there. If you don't have it, say, wait on me. Praise our God. Um, Acts chapter 10, verse 30. And Cornelius said, four days ago, I was fasting. Until this hour, and at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard and thy alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, sound man, whatever you did, it's beautiful, and call hither Simon whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon, a tanner by the seaside, who when he cometh shall speak unto thee. Immediately, therefore, I send to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now, therefore, are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I perceive. That God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Go now to Acts 19. Acts 19. Acts 19. When you have it, say I'm there. Acts 19. And look at verse number two. He said unto them, have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, unto what then were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John, verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues Somebody say, and prophesy. No, say it like you got power. Say, and prophesy. and prophesy. No, say it one more time. Say, and prophesy. and prophesy. I need you to look at somebody that you know has the Holy Ghost. Just look at them in their eyeballs. Shake their hand like you're going to shake it off. <clears throat> and say, neighbor, here's our subject. It is the Holy Ghost. That's enough. Now I'm, I'm from the country. I'm from the hills of West Virginia, and we give subtopics. So I want you to turn around and tell a praiser. If they're not a praiser, please don't talk to them. You're wasting your time. 
but find you a praiser and say, here's our subtopic. The fire is coming. I don't like, I don't see how we can talk about the fire and you can be still. Then we may need to have to do some altar work because if I'm talking about the fire and you can be still, you may not be full of it. You may not have the Holy Ghost. But y'all sitting there looking cute. But God told me we get ready to go back to the old time way. I said we're going back to the old time way. Be seated, please. Keep me on schedule, daughter, son. Keep me on schedule. It is the Holy Ghost. The fire is coming. I'll come get you in about 14 minutes. I guess we must start, Bishop, woman of God, by asking then, what is the Holy Ghost? Well, that's the first problem. The Holy Ghost is not a what. The Holy Ghost is a who. The Holy Ghost is a being. I believe this is the most misinterpreted, misrepresented, misconceived, misconstrued entity in the existence of the Bible and in humanity. In Judaism, the Holy Spirit, otherwise known as the Holy Ghost, is the divine force, quality, and influence of God over the universe and his creatures. And look at your neighbor and say, you are his creature. In Nicene Christianity, can I give you some theology for a moment? The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. The Hebrew Bible contains the term Spirit of God, or as we know it, Ruach Elohim. It's the Ruach, which by the Jews is interpreted in the sense of the might of the Unitarian God. This interpretation is different from Nicene Christianity. It has a conception of the Holy Spirit as one person of the Trinity. What is the Trinity? It is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. According to a theologian named Rudolf Bultmann, he said there are two ways to think about the Holy Ghost. One way is an animistic being. And then the second way is dynamistic. In animistic thinking, watch this, come with me, he is an independent agent. A personal power which can fall upon a man and take possession of a man. Enabling him or compelling him to perform manifestations outside of, him, of his human self. While in dynamistic thinking, it appears as an impersonal force which fills a man, I'm coming, like a fluid. So one, one reality says it sits on a man. The other reality says it lives in a man. It will sit on a man if there is a man in the vicinity of a man that has a need. I'm coming. Good God Almighty, which means, here it is, you don't have to know God for the Holy Ghost to sit on you. If the Holy Ghost will sit on a jackass, what makes you think the Holy Ghost, with everybody being used of God is not full of God? I'm going to come back in just a moment. But both, both kinds of thought appear in Jewish and Christian scripture, but animistic is more typical in the Old Testament, whereas dynamistic is more common in the New Testament. The distinction of the two coincides with the Holy Spirit as either a temporary I'm coming or a permanent gift. In the Old Testament and Jewish thought, it is primary temporary with a specific situation or task in mind, which means somebody in God's proximity has a need. So I will use the Holy Ghost to borrow a being. In order for the person that I know that has the need, their need can be supplied. Can I bless you real quick? Don't look for your miracle to come from the person in the cross and the collar this year. 
Your miracle might come from the person you don't like. It might come from the person you know don't live holy. It might come. I'm going I'm to get in trouble. That section quiet. Let me talk over here. It might come from somebody that you don't think is qualified to be used. Don't miss your miracle because you don't like how it's packaged. I'm trying to help somebody. They, they're quiet in this room. God help me. Don't, don't you miss your miracle because they don't look like your typical Christian. Because let me help you. Everything dressed up don't know the Lord. I'm coming now. In the Old Testament, you would be a witness to the Holy Spirit working. Uh, but watch this. Hold you, hold yourself now. But in the New Testament, watch me. You were the Holy Spirit working. Can I say that again? In the Old Testament, you were a witness to the works of the Holy Ghost. But in the New Testament, you became, God Almighty, the Holy Ghost working. Okay, so let's deal with that. Uh, Acts chapter 1 verse 8 declares, but you shall receive, come on, talk to me, power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be what? Witnesses to me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the end of the so let's deal with it you shall receive what come on talk like you got it you shall receive one more time you shall receive see God is about to release power on some of y'all to get your whole family delivered you you didn't hear me in that section back there let me talk over here I said God is about to use your very being to get your whole family delivered who is God helping in here anybody got a son need to be saved anybody got a daughter that needs to be saved the power of the Holy Ghost is about to rise up in your belly listen so now before I deal with this, I want you to understand the time. When is this happening? This is, this is the part of Jesus' last instructions to the disciples before he ascended to heaven. He tells the disciples, you shall receive power after, watch this, the dead me comes upon you. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't hear me. After, after the dead me and what's left of the, de of the dead me because when I die my spirit remains I, I need you to hear this so the reason that we're not seeing a lot of power in church because won't nothing die who am I helping the reason we're not seeing miracles in the house of God because won't nobody die everybody wants to be seen and it's a look at me season who is God talking to in here but when are you going to let God kill you so somebody else can live Look at your neighbor say it's time to die. This, is, this word, this word, this word power. Somebody holler at your girl and say power. In the New Testament, the, the Greek, the word power means dunamis. Which means, and you shall receive, watch this, strength and abilities. Strength and abilities. But in the Hebrew, the word power means, uh, and when you heard it in the Old Testament, it meant koach. Uh, let me say it again, koach, K-O-A-C-H, which means mental strength and potential. I'm going to come get you in just a second. So what he's saying here is when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, then I deal with you in two facets. Uh, first, before I can feel you, I must heal you. I'm trying trying to help somebody God Almighty I got to heal you from the inside out before I can fill you with my spirit so that is I assign to you the co-op power which means I got to deal with whatever life has done to your mental God help me and some of you need to have your brain washed is anybody going to talk to me in here your psyche is like Mikey it will eat anything and perhaps the power can't move through you because the part of your brain is holding on to too much of the past so before I can feel you I got to heal you Secondly, once I have healed you, then I, watch this, woman of God, once I have healed you, then I can reintroduce you to the you I assigned. 
Uh, let me say it again. Once I heal you, then I reintroduce you to you. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me in here. Which means once you get your mind back, then I can give you your strength back. God, who is he helping in here? Uh, that's the difference between dunamis and koak. Dunamis, watch this, uh, gives you the strength of the power. But koak says, let me wash your mind first. Uh, watch this. Uh, because the Bible said, Lord have mercy. Uh, let this mind. Am I talking? Which is in Christ. Be also in you. Behold all things. Glory. Hallelujah. Are passed away. And all things are become new. Look down your road until he's about to give you a new mind. He's about to. He's about to give you a new mind. He's about to give you a new mind. Uh, we cannot have, we cannot leave out the latter part of the scripture. Watch the latter part of the scripture says, because we shout on, we shall have our power. We shout on the power and we leave the scripture alone, man of God. But the rest of the scripture says, and you shall be a witness. God watch this so that proves they get ready to get mad at me sir you pushing me that proves that the Holy Ghost is not for you to become famous uh, I knew I was going to lose some folk in this room glory hallelujah nor is it for you to become grand nor is the Holy Ghost for you to get a lot of likes and followers nor is it for you to be known all over the world but it is for you to show him off ain't nobody saying nothing to me but watch this now this verse also proves that when you have the Holy Ghost you should have reach and range in the spirit because it says that you shall be witnesses to the ends of the earth. God help me. So we have a lot of people proclaiming to have the Holy Ghost, but they have no range and no reach. I'm going to get in trouble tonight. I said we got people proclaiming to have the Holy Ghost, but they have no range and they have no reach. Because I'm sorry, if all your Holy Ghost can do is make me dance, I'm a dancing lunatic because I'm dancing, but I'm not delivered. Ain't nobody saying nothing. I'm worshiping, but I'm still in war. Who is God talking to in here? I need to find the prophets, the preachers, the leaders, the evangelists, the ministers, the bishops, the elders, the pastors, the preachers that can not only make me dance, but get me delivered. That can not only make me dance and shout, but can lead me to a rock. You don't believe you're supposed to have reach and range. You better ask Daniel. God, Daniel was one in the Bible that would see for different countries. And also Ezekiel that would see for Egypt and Moab and Ammon and Edom and Philistia and Tyre and more. Where are the prophets that say that they have the Holy Ghost, that they have some range in the spirit? Oh God, this verse provides the underlying reason for the visible manifestations of, a, of God shown in Acts chapter 2. That says, when the day of Pentecost, God help me, was fully come. They were all what? In one place, on one accord. And suddenly, y'all ain't saying nothing right there. There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. This is why it's very dangerous for you to sit beside somebody in church that's got a mouth that won't move. Because when the fullness of God drops in the room, it will hit the room and miss you. Why? Because you refuse to open your mouth. Let's practice. Let everything that has breath open your mouth. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Watch this, watch this. So, so, so then, Dr. Val, what is a witness? What is a witness? What is a witness? Ask your neighbor, say, what is a witness? In the Greek, it is a martyr. Uh, I'm trying to help somebody. Uh, what is a martyr? A martyr is a testimony. So in the Greek, it's a martyr, but a witness in the Hebrew is an eid. What is an eid? It is evidence. So the Holy Ghost lives in me to give me a testimony that says I have evidence, eid, that he is who he says. God help me in here, that he is. Therefore, I can be a witness because my storm, Hedamansia, left me with a testimony that he is Ruach Elohim. He is the very breath of God. And when I look back over my life and I think about the things that I've been through, I can truly say, therefore, this scripture proves that you can't have a testimony without 
a storm. Who is God talking to? You can't have a testimony without a trial. And you can't be a witness until you can tell us what he brought you out of. No, you want your testimony to be, I got a new house and I got a new car. You want your testimony to be, I got a promotion on my job. But I'm looking for the real saints that says my testimony is, I got attacked by some demons and I overcame by the blood of the lamb. And the word of my, a witch was cutting back to me. But God delivered me from the witch. He delivered me from the viper. He delivered me from the python. That's the kind of testimony I'm looking for. Not you got a house, but did he keep you when you didn't have a house? Did he keep you when you didn't have no money? Did he keep you? Look at three people, tell them I don't know about you, but I know him as a keeper. I know him. I know him as a keeper. Your neighbor don't have a testimony yet, but I need you to find a neighbor with a mouth and say, neighbor, I know him to be a keeper. I'm coming down your row in just a moment. Tell somebody else on your row, I know him to be a mind regulator because he kept my mind when I was losing my mind. I know him to be a heart fixer because I love who I should hate. Who is God talking to? I know him to be a restorer because he restored my soul. I know him to be a protector because he protected me. Ask your neighbor, what is your testimony? So the second part is, watch this now, listen, don't lose it yet. The second part is, uh, tell your neighbor, the reason you ought to be talking right now, because there's about to be a breakout in here in about 15 minutes, and you're going to miss it because you won't open your mouth. <laughs> Good God Almighty. And when it breaks out, you're going to get broke free. I ain't got nobody. Uh-uh. Oh, uh, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who is God helping in this room? Is there anybody in here that says, I've been going through this storm for the last six months, uh, and I will not go through the second half of this year like the first half of this year. He loosed my shackles, and he set me. Watch this. Okay, I'm coming. I'm coming, woman of God. The, the second part is that, uh, so he's a witness. Oh, God, he's a witness. And the second part of the Holy Ghost is, watch this, uh, woman of God, he gives you evidence. Now, watch this. Now, the evidence uh, is beyond being filled with the Holy Ghost. It's beyond tongues. Can I? Because I know some fluent tongue demons. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here. I know people that can speak in tongues and still crazy as can be. Hey, your glory. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, because I used to be one of them. Go on, tell the truth. Tell the truth. Yeah. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. So, so it's, it's beyond tongues. That's the physical evidence. I don't know if we're going to make it through this. But then there is the evidence called Ishoa. I think we're going to get stuck right here, sir. That is, watch this, uh, watch this, Jalen. That is um, the Hebrew word for verification. So now I understand why John's gospel calls him the spirit of truth. Uh, because uh, Psalms 25 and 5 says, guide me in your truth and teach me for you are God my Savior and my hope is in you all the day long. This verse highlights the importance of only getting truth from a seek. Oh, God, watch this. If the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth then I must suggest that when you have the Holy Spirit God help me in here then Ishoa changes you and the first place that Ishoa shows up you ready woman of God is in your decision making I'm trying they're quiet 
So you're telling me you can speak in tongues, but you can't hear them in English. Who is God? Let me come over here. I said you can speak in tongues, but you can't hear them in English. Look at your neighbor and say, where is the Yeshua? Where is the evidence that you've been verified? Watch this. Watch this. You can speak in tongues, but you can't. You can't hear them in English. Watch this. Holy Spirit will not push you, push his will against yours. I'm going to get in trouble. I said the Holy Spirit will not push his will against your will. However, he is very much in control. Yes, he is. When you have the real Holy Ghost, watch this. He will stand up in you and say, they might be good to you, but they're not good for you. You with me? Decisions. Look at somebody say decisions. Uh, God, watch this, watch this, watch this. Uh, because, 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 because when you have the real Holy Ghost, you've been verified. And the way I know you're verified is you don't get convicted after you make the decision. The conviction is your decision. They, they, they're quiet in here. They, 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 can I say it one more time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to sleep with you and you want to sleep with me. But one of us has to have the issue. One of us has to have something in us that says what I want to do with you. Glory, hallelujah. And what you want to do with me. One of us got to be holy today. tell your neighbor both of us can't be weak at the same time no I don't like your neighbor I said tell your neighbor both of us can't be weak at the same time one of us gotta be verified so Dr. Valner how do you become verified I don't become verified without temptation oh, oh God oh God they quiet in here because I've got to pass the test of temptation before I can receive the issue of the Holy Ghost. Who is God? Am I preaching in here? Am I in the right place? Or better, I said, I cannot be verified or have the issue of the Holy Ghost until I have passed the test of temptation. You don't have the right to tell me that, watch this, glory, hallelujah, that you've received the ishore of God and you've never been tempted. Because the way I'm going to know if you're full of the Holy Ghost is the first question I ask you is I'm going to ask you, what test did you pass? Glory, hallelujah. Okay, they're going to get mad at me, woman of God in the pink. But let me bless you right now. You know that the Holy Ghost is in you. When you can pass the test, you ready? Of being ignored. Don't. Don't hire nobody on your, on your ministry staff that always needs affirmation. I'm going to get in trouble. That always needs that name called across the pulpit. Who is God talking to? Because I'm looking for somebody that I can get to do all the work and get none of the credit. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me right there. No, see, you got a mad neighbor sitting beside you. But tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, that I must be full of the Holy Ghost. Because I've been assured over and over and over and over again. Because as a matter of fact, I did all the work and somebody stole the credit. Who is God talking to in this room? Tell somebody, get full of it. Get full of it. So woman of God, here's the problem. The problem is this pulpit. They got quiet in here. I said, the problem is this pulpit. Because here's the problem with the preaching is that we are preaching our own personal indoctrination. And we're preaching our own plan and we're not preaching what Jesus preached. Because when we start preaching what Jesus preached, folk will get filled immediately. How do I know when you are filled with the Holy Ghost? Because the first thing the Holy Spirit comes to do is reconstruct. 
Y'all quiet in here. It comes to transform. Come on now. I'm coming your way. I'm not moving. It comes to transfigure. You want me to turn. I'm not turning. It comes to alter. Y'all quiet in here. And it comes to convert. Watch this. You cannot claim that you are filled with the Holy Spirit and still full of you. One of y'all got to get out. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. Because one of the revealers, there are seven spirits of the Holy Ghost. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. And one of those spirits is called the spirit of, watch this, a teacher and the revealer of truth. So therefore, one of the first assignments of the Holy Spirit is to tell you about yourself. How can the Holy Ghost tell you about your neighbor but never tell you about you? They quiet in here. You got so much revelation about what's going on in your neighbor's house, but you can't see what's going on in your house. Who is God helping in this place? Don't rebuke me and you still sleeping with him and he ain't your man and he ain't your husband. Ain't nobody saying nothing. They got mad at me over there. I'm all right. Let me come over here. Look at your neighbor and say before your Holy Ghost checks me, can it check you? Say to your neighbor, supposed to tell me about me. You hear how quiet the room got? I said, tell somebody on your row, it's supposed to tell me about me. So watch me now. In the book of Acts, he tells Peter, salvation is for everyone. In that same book, Acts, he corrected Ananias and Sapphira about lying concerning their giving. Once again, in the book of Acts, he corrects Saul of Tarsus, also known as the Apostle Paul, for arresting many believers and being arrogant. Which tells me when you have the Holy Ghost for real, we know because there is a conviction, a change in you that brings you back to your original self. Oh, God, help me. Glory, hallelujah. Mm. You don't look nothing like the you he made. You look like the you your decisions made. Tell somebody you ain't scared of, you look like a decision. Your friends lied. You don't look like what you've been through. Yes, you do. You look exactly like what you've been through. And just like who you've been with. Ain't nobody saying nothing over here. They quiet in this room. Tell your neighbor you look like a decision. I told my kids, when you get out of line, my spiritual sons and daughters, when you get out of the line and people ask me, what's his name? Decision. They look exactly like what they did last night. They're quiet in here. <laughs> you didn't bring me here. You can't send me home. Please understand, watch this, I'm almost finished, that the Holy Ghost is the very power of God. Watch this, what is the Bible? The Bible is God's breath. The Bible is the thoughts of God. My goodness. God's breath or God breathes. So wherever the wind of God is, there... mm. There is the Holy Ghost. John 20, 22 says, and with that, he breathed on them. Watch me. And said what? Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Let me put a note here. And let me go to my text. Cornelius said, I was fasting and praying. And here's the part, y'all not going to like woman of God. Cornelius was not saved. (laughs) 
However, he received a visitation. Watch this. Some of you are about to lose your visitation because you don't like who it's coming through. Watch how you handle the waitress. She might be your visitation. I'm coming. I'm, I'm, I'm coming. Watch how you handle Gehazi's. Watch how you handle the servants of the leader. Because they might be carrying your visitation. God told me to tell 20 people in this room and 100 of you watching online to tell somebody on your role and tell somebody in the comments, I'm about to receive my visitation. They, you, you didn't, you, you, you didn't, you caught it. Did, did some of y'all didn't catch it. You, you're about to receive a visitation that's going to have people questioning, are you who you are? God Almighty, because they remember the you that you were. Glory, hallelujah. But this visitation is about to shift your life in a way that people are going to question, are you still the same person? Okay, watch this. Watch this. Here it is for, for 100 people that will shout because of, because of what you put down. The Lord told me to tell you I'm about to visit you. You, 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 okay, you must not have put nothing down because of what you gave up. Glory, hallelujah. The Lord told me to tell you I'm about to visit you Be because of what you didn't yield to. God told me to tell you I'm about to visit you. Let me help you. The temptation is not the sin. You, you, you're, you're not going to hell because you're tempted. Because the Bible says Jesus was in all ways tempted. You cannot be tempted by a thing that's not a temptation. I said you can't be tempted by a thing that is not a temptation. So you're not going to hell because you are tempted by the thing that has a hold on your flesh. You are, Lord have mercy. What gives you the miracle is every time that thing rises up in you and you tell that thing no God is a rewarder he tell your neighbor he heard you no I don't like your neighbor they should have shouted I said tell another neighbor he heard you we almost there we almost there so watch this, because I want to refer back to I want to refer back to Acts chapter ten verse thirty four, and it says, "But conjunction, junction. What is your function?" It says, uh, "Watch this." But Peter did something that a lot of people won't do no more. Peter opened. His, mm. Let me tell you something. Something shifts when you open your mouth. But Ladessa, the real miracle comes when I open my mouth and I don't feel like it. Yeah. Glory, hallelujah. When God gives you something you can't praise him for, but you praise him anyway. I don't like the way you look at Is there anybody in this room that's got a right to be mad, angry, and upset? But somewhere in your spirit, you find one more hallelujah. Somewhere in your spirit, you find one more thank you, Jesus. Somewhere way down in your soul, you find one more glory. He said, uh, he said, he said, but in every nation, contrary to popular belief, Holy Spirit is not just trying to move in your church. Mm. It's not just trying to move in your clique. It's not just trying to move in your circle. Not just trying to move in your denomination. Y'all get ready to get mad at me. It's not trying to move just in your systems, in your race, your gender. But the Holy Ghost is about to move in every place. Here it is. That is holy. God ain't nobody. That is clean glory. That is righteous. I'm coming. That is sacred. Hallelujah. That is consecrated. That is hallowed. That is sanctified. Venerated. Divine. Dedicated. Godly. Upright. 
tell three people, high five them real good and say, if you're living holy, if they don't shout, don't talk to them the rest of the year. Say, if you're living holy, there's about to be a performance of the things he spoke. You didn't hear me. I said, there's about to be a performance. So, so we almost there. 11 minutes. So in Acts 11, you will see Peter defend his visit to Cornelius because it's not lawful for a Jew to come into the home of one of another nation. Wait a minute. When God wants to bless you, he will break the law to do it. Now, I, I, I don't know if this is appropriate to put right here, but the minute I said that, I heard in my spirit divine reversal. God is about to break rules so you can have it. I don't like them over there. I'm coming over here. I said God is about to break rules so that you can have the thing that you've been praying for. He's about to go against the doctors. He's about to go against the lawyers. He's about to go against the courtroom. He's about to go against everything. No, tell somebody that'll praise God with you. He's about to break a rule for you. No, I don't like your neighbor. I said, come out of your seat, find three people. High five him and say, neighbor, he's about to break a rule for you. No, you ain't talking to the right person. I said, come out of your seat and tell three people, he's about to break a rule for you. That's a good place for y'all to help him. I said, find somebody and say, neighbor, he's about to break a rule on behalf of your miracle. Whatever he's got to do to get it to you. He's about to break the rule. Change the system. Break through barriers. Change paperwork. Change numbers. Open up offices. Talk to the government. Whatever he's got to do. So now, 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 watch this. In Acts 11, Peter's defending his visit. In Acts 12, you're going to see the death of the first apostle. I'm going somewhere. Who is James, who was the son of Zebedee. You will also see a miracle where chains fall off of the same man, Peter. Wait a minute. When you have the Holy Ghost as your leader and guide, things will start falling off. God help me in here I said things will start falling off okay some of y'all been had things around you watch this that don't belong to you you didn't hear what I said some of you are tied up and chained up because of your DNA y'all quiet in here it's called iniquitous burdens and God told me to tell you I'm about to break you free of everything your daddy did that he didn't repent for I'm about to break it off of your life I'm about to lose you and let you go So watch this now. In Acts chapter 11, you see a repentant Peter. But in Acts chapter 12, you see a Peter get delivered by an angel. But now we're in Acts chapter 14. And now you will see the Holy Ghost, watch this, sit on Saul. And heal a man that the Bible says was lame from birth. What are you talking about, Dr. Val? God is about to use the Holy Ghost in you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. To make something lame get up. They getting on my nerves back there. I said the Holy Ghost got power. Y'all quiet over here. I said the Holy Ghost got power. I said look at three people and say, name. Don't you mishandle me. Because I got the power uh, to make dead stuff get up. I got the power uh, to bring chains off of you. Uh, I got the power uh, to get you set free and delivered. Tell your neighbor the one. 
worst thing you can do is play with my Holy Ghost. Because I'm trying to show you when you're clean, glory. And you got the real Holy Ghost on the inside. I'm trying to show you how it performs, glory. So in, in Acts chapter, watch this, 14, Paul uses the Holy Ghost to make something lame get up. In Acts 15, watch this, the Holy Ghost shuts down anyone that causes trouble for people that have turned to God. You did 50 of y'all should have ran. God told me to tell 50 of y'all that'll shout. I'm about to shut the mouth of your enemy. I'm about to shut down every witch, every sorcerer, every soothsayer, every wizard, every python spirit, black magic, white magic, crystal of magic. I'm about to set it go. I'm about to let you go. I suffer not a witch to live. I suffer not. To silence the enemy. But here's where your Holy Ghost will make something mad. Now we land in Acts 16. Hallelujah. And we see two praying men. Glory. By the name of Paul and Silas. And they make one of the biggest mistakes in ministerial history. They cast the devil out of a woman. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. And she is operating in a spirit of divination. And Paul and Silas now introduces the church to something we don't do much of. They introduce us to deliverance. I'm getting ready to get in trouble. Wait, but when they do this, they go to prison. Look at your neighbor say prison. And they go to prison because they operated in deliverance. God help me in here. Y'all quiet. Wait, but when they got in prison, they didn't get in prison and get quiet. Okay. Didn't I tell y'all you got to open your mouth? They went in prison and they started praising. Hallelujah. And they started worshiping. And when they started praising, and when they started worshiping, the same thing that happened in Acts 10 and the same thing that happened in Acts 2 happened in Acts 16. There came a sudden... Look at three people on your own and say, Hey, neighbor, if you don't want to suddenly get off of this road, because I'm about to shout until God does what he said he was doing. No, open your mouth until he moves. I said, open your mouth. I said, open your mouth. Shout until it breaks. Shout until they break. Shout. Shout until they break. Shout. Shout. Until you get a text on your phone. Shout. Until you get an email. Shout. Watch now. Watch this, woman of God. Please preach this. I don't have time. Watch this. Because we shout on the suddenly. And that's a good place to dance. But I don't like the suddenly as much as I like the earthquake. So I had, I had to tap into my prophetic education. And I had to write in here what an earthquake means prophetically. God, when I give you this, the whole scripture going to come alive. The word earthquake in this particular text means God's wrath. So now, did their praise make God mad? No, not at them. Your neighbor, don't you make? 
make me shout until God get mad. Okay. I, I ain't got nobody saying nothing. It made God angry at their situation. What they what God said was, you will not take my deliverers and lock them up. So before you do that, I will shut everything. That's why you can't look at your neighbor crazy when they go to giving God glory. Because your neighbor's praise has the ability to break everything in your life. Break it free. And God help me in here. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm about to give God glory until my family and your family get the deliverance. I'm about to give God glory until my son and your son get set free. I'm about to praise him until everything. Grab the hand of your neighbor. Say, neighbor, can you do me a a favor for the next 10 seconds? Can you praise with me? Because the last time I checked, two people praising together has the ability to shake some stuff up. Now go ahead and praise them with your neighbor. Open your mouth and praise them with your neighbor. So much I didn't get to, but that's all right. Because I want to hit this point right here. Watch this. The Bible says, we're going we're gonna to dance again in a minute. The Bible says, uh, Acts chapter 19, they ask a question. It says, uh, have you received the Holy Ghost? Since since she believed. The word since there means when. You can't, watch this, believe him and don't receive him. My God. Did you, did you, hear, did you hear what I just said? You, you can't believe him and, and don't receive him. He says, uh, and they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. He said unto them, unto what? Baptism. Were you baptized? They said, unto John's baptism. So Paul says, John baptized you unto repentance. I'm coming now. That they should believe on him which should come after John. God, they quieted here. So when they heard this, because in other words, John said, Paul, he said, there shall come another after me that you ought to be baptized in his name. Glory, hallelujah. So, you, so I understand that you have not witnessed, glory, the Holy Ghost. Because you don't have my name. Wait, 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 wait. So then they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, sir, watch what happens next. Then it says, and then Paul laid hands upon them. And when he laid hands, the Holy Ghost came. On them which tells me that perhaps you haven't received it because the person trying to give it to you is not a carrier of it so one of the first signs of the Holy Ghost they ain't gonna like me is impartation they, 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 they quiet they quiet they, they, they quiet in here. They quiet in here. And then Paul laid hands. Watch this. The Holy Ghost came on them. Watch this. 
It says they spoke in tongues, physical evidence. But then it came a comma. Pause. And prophesy. Put, put that scripture back, please. Please put it back on the screen. So, so they spoke with tongues and prophesied. That word prophesied means right there, sir, wind. So when Paul laid, don't do that. When Paul laid hands, he gave them the very Ruach Elohim. He gave them the breath of God. Y'all just missed me. Well, watch, 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 watch this, watch this, and 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 then the Bible says, watch this, watch this, watch this. The, 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 then what happens is, if you look over, if you look over, and, and and keep reading, you're going to start reading where miracles starts happening everywhere, because it was a sign that the wind of God. I ain't got nobody saying nothing. The wind of God was with them because, watch this, Jesus, the man wasn't there, but his breath was. God help me. And, and what the Holy Ghost will say to somebody that will run, that if as long as I got your breath, ain't nobody saying nothing in here. I don't need a man, just give me your breath. I, I, I don't need a physical agent, just give me the breath. I just need the Ruach of God. And watch this, here's for a hundred people that will shout. God said, I'm about to send my breath to your house. They quiet right here in this section. I gotta go, you are. But what happened in Acts chapter 2 is that the breath set on them. And when the breath set on them, the Bible says they were all filled. So, Dr. you said to us, you know, went from Acts 10 all the way to Acts 20. You don't walk through here about what the Holy Ghost does. But where does the fire come from? I want to show you something. Tell somebody I believe. I believe. Sir, this place is about to be. Tell somebody I believe. I believe. Oh, because when I got this revelation, I lost it. Tell somebody I believe. So now, sir, watch this. There's a scripture in the Old Testament that says there were three men. By the name of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh, let us pray for me. And the Bible says that this king named Nebuchadnezzar throws them into a fire. God help me. And the Bible says that they look and there's only three men. And then Nebuchadnezzar says, go check on who we threw in the fire. Okay, watch this. Uh, Y'all gonna catch it in a minute. They look at and, and he says, uh, "Oh wait, didn't we uh, put in uh, three? Uh, but behold, I see a fourth man loose and walking. Here's my problem with the scripture, and it looks like the Son of God." How do you know what the Son of God looked like and he hadn't shown up yet? And God told me, if you believe I'm God and you praise me when you can't see me, I'll show up early. I need to tell somebody in this place, God sent me here to tell somebody, look at your neighbor and shout coming but it's not coming to kill you it's coming to reveal that there is a God it's coming to reveal that the Holy Ghost is still moving it's coming to reveal every storm that you've been through over the last six months God said I allowed it so that you could see that the Holy Ghost still got power 
wondrous working power. Grab your neighbor by the hand. Shake your neighbor. I said, shake them real good. And say, oh, 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 neighbor. Whatever God got to do for his wind to blow in my life. Need him uh, to send the fire, uh, send the fire, uh, because if it's gonna get me my breakthrough, uh, I'll stand in the fire. I won't move from the fire until the Holy Ghost uh, shows up. God told me to tell you, the fourth man uh, is about to show up in your house. He's about to show up in your marriage. About to show up in your bank account. Ruach Elohim is about to show up in everything. And I need you to tell somebody. Look at your neighbor and say neighbor. I declare no weapon for the gates. It will not prosper. I don't like your name. But like a good Find you somebody and say, hey, neighbor, the fire is coming, but I got a word for you. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season, you're going to reap. If you faint not, tell somebody, the fire is coming, but I got a word for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Find somebody and tell them the fire is coming. But I got a word for you. After you have suffered for a while, where's my church at? There shall be seed. Time in a harvest. Tell somebody the fire is coming. But I got a word for you. We trial in tribulations, knowing this that the trying of your faith work in patience. Patience experience. Experience hope. And hope will make you not ashamed. Grab somebody. Pull them real good and say, neighbor, the storm was there to show you that the wind of God will never leave you nor forsake you. But I got a word for you. Joel said, those that call on the name of the Lord shall 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 be delivered I said them that call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered because some trust in chariots some trust in horses but we shall remember the name of the Lord because the name of the Lord is a strong the righteous run in and they are safe. Look at your neighbor, point your finger and say, neighbor, you're safe, you're healed, and you're whole. I don't like your neighbor. Find somebody and say, I said, you're safe, you're healed, and you're whole. Grab one more person and say, neighbor. You're saved. You're healed. And you're whole. One to three people tell them the fire is your friend. I said one to three people tell them the fire is your friend. Without the fire, the fourth man can't show up. You're trying to avoid the very thing you need. I 
I said, tell three people you need the fire. I can't run with people in this season that run from fires. Here it is for a praiser. I need somebody to run in it with me. Listen, the name of the Lord is a what? The righteous. You need the fire. The fire is your friend. I was today years old when I learned that. That the fire is your friend. I said the fire is your friend. You're trying to avoid the fire. Don't run from the fire. Otherwise you will never be introduced to the fourth man. I had to show you who he was before I could tell you where he landed. I had to show you who he was. Don't You can't avoid the fourth man. Or you can't avoid the fire, rather. It's just like that alarm. That's how heaven is going to alert earth. That you're owed something. Here it is for Tim Praisers. There's getting ready to be a holy alarm. That's going to go off on your behalf. getting ready to be a holy alarm can I tell you this I, I, I like I like a Ladessa I had to ask God what are you doing and my family's never seen this much death within two years grandmother aunt the aunt that died the daughter that died is her daughter unexpectedly I said God what are you doing what, what's, what's, what's happening? Watch this. Whenever God disrupts something, you ready for this? Whenever he shakes something, there's because there's something he needs to shift. God cannot shift without a shake. That section's quiet, huh? God cannot shift without a shake. My therapist said to me, don't ask for God to use you in a mega way if you want minor storms. You don't get to have the mega major ministry and you can't have handle mega, mega major warfare. So if you've been in a storm between January and June, you're in the best place of your life. Blessed, 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 blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of my God. I love him, I love him. 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 I want you to know that ain't no name above. Hey, lift him up. Blessed, 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 blessed be the name. Blessed, 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 blessed be the name. Bless it, bless it, bless it, bless it be the name. Bless it be the name of my God. I love him, I love him. 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 I want you to know that ain't no name above him. I love him, I love him. I love him, I love him. I love him, I love him. Bless it, I love him, I love him.